Arts, a bustling hub of culture, commerce, and class warfare. Sitting pretty at the top of the food chain is your classic evil mega corporation, Fun Fun Co., aka The Man. A bunch of soulless leeches draining the arcade industry dry. Still, there are those who resist. Enter the gangs of Super City, who come from near and far. To Gilly's Arcade, the last bastion of true gaming in a sea of corporate bloodsuckers and sellouts. But the independent spirit of this gaming oasis can't fend off Fun Fun Co. forever. Luckily, Gilly has a plan. Or at least I hope I do. Or at least I hope I do. Ah, you snuck up on me, Tombot. Put that brochure away, because I've got grudges to settle. And revenge that needs revenge. -ing. Here it is, my finest game, and the last I'll ever make. What should we call it, Tombot? <laughs> Arcade Geddon. I like it. What the hell? Something's not right. A glitch? No. I triple-checked all the code! Tombot, run a diagnostics protocol. I'm gonna check under the hood. It's worse than I thought! A virus! Infecting the whole system! And running its own simulations inside the game itself! But how? We only just booted it up! Damn it! My machine! Tombot, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Money grubbing scum! If Fun Fun Co. wants a war, I'll gladly call in the big guns. What do you mean the line was busy, Tombot? Forget it. I know someone else we can call. Prepare. Hey, it's me, Uncle Gilly. Come quickly. I need your help. Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy Steve O, the King here, and as you just saw, we're playing a game called Arcade Again. It's a game that I saw on the Play Store. It looked pretty interesting. I think it's free right now. It may not be. It may be. You have to check it out yourself. Otherwise, uh, I decide, you know, let me record a little bit and just post a little bit of the gameplay and show you a little bit about the game. So far, what I've played, I actually have enjoyed it. Uh, throughout the video, uh, I will actually have my commentary, but most of it will just be. You know, actual gameplay. What you're watching right now is me doing my usual. You know, whenever I start a new game, I like to explore a little bit. And also, the controls were kind of weird at first. It kept telling me to look around. I thought I was looking around enough, but I guess I wasn't. So I had to, like, look up and down and stuff like that. And then I just started pressing random buttons, and then I'm like, okay, what's going on? Like, so... I was just trying to get the feel of the controls stuff like that. And I was wondering if there was, like, you know, any hidden stuff or if I can interact with anything. So I started just looking around, just trying to see what's up with the game. And also, I was also just really just enjoying the graphics. I like these, like, kind of, like, futuristic type, uh, you know, style games, you know? One thing I was vibing with was the music in the game. The game had actually like good music and stuff like that. I was exploring a little bit and ended up seeing Shorty over here on the couch. Can't actually interact with her, but as you'll see uh, as the game continues, you can later on. And actually, she's like one of like I don't know, like kind of like a boss or like a gang member or something like that. But she's like one of the leaders of the gang members or something like that. You'll see as the game continues. One thing I was rocking with was the style of that it was like an old arcade, 
you know, that nobody really goes to anymore and stuff like that. They even had, like, the, the quarter machine where you put the dollars in and get your quarters out so you can play the different arcade games. I thought this was, like, a Dance Dance Revolution thing. But you'll find out later that it's actually a way to actually, you know, battle other people and stuff like that. Now, these vending machines I go up to often because I'm just like, what are they? I can see that they have, like, the icon for different, like, clothing and stuff like that. And I was just wondering, like, when do I get the chance to act direct? But otherwise, uh, let's talk to Gilly and see what happens. Would you look at what the cat dragged in? Blugworth, you made it! That's got a nice ring to it. You know, everyone around town used to call me Gilly. Still do, but you get the idea. What do you think of the place? Not bad for only 36 years of blood, sweat, and an arm. Anyway, here's the sitch. That's short for situation. The other night, I finally finished work on my latest game. Game developers don't retire, kiddo. Sure, a scenic island getaway for a couple weeks would have been nice, but this arcade takes priority. You can imagine the disappointment on Mrs. Gilly's face when she heard I was back in the thick of it. Heck no! Why? Know anyone looking for 357 pounds of tattooed arcade genius? Here's the thing. Fun Fun Co. has uploaded a virus into the code. Not only are they corrupting Arcade Ageddon, but FFC is taking over the leaderboard. I think I can debug and isolate the threat, but I need you to buy me some time. The more people we get playing the game, the harder it will be for the virus to spread. The best of the best, though you'd be surprised how tough it can be to win over people with a new game. Especially in this town, where arcades rule supreme, and the gangs don't take too kindly to us designers. Oh, Plug, you're making me blush. But kill the flattery, kid. There's work to do. What do you say you help me recalibrate the machine? So great. Last thing I need is some punk getting vaporized when I digitize them. Don't worry, it's stable. For the most part. I'm 70% certain you'll be fine. 75. You want to learn the ropes or not? You're braver than I. <laughs> Just kidding. You'll be fine. Step on the platform and let's get you into the game. Like I was saying, I go to these vending machines like over a thousand times just because I'm wondering when can I actually use it. Then I finally hop in this like teleporter or like, you know, like Digi, Digi device that kind of like teleports you into the game. So it's kind of like, you know, where you're like virtually put into the game and put in the game as your actual self. Um, the tutorial is kind of one of the basic tutorials where it's just like teach you the basics stuff like that. Nothing too special. Teach you how to shoot and stuff like that. I only did it because I'm like, it's a new game, haven't, you know, been really playing video games in a minute. And with the new game, I want to make sure I knew the controls so it would be easy to play. And as I was kind of finding out, it's kind of like one of your basic, like, shooter games. Like, where you're going through a bunch of different uh, levels and stuff like that, and you're, like, shooting, I don't know what they're called, they're not really beat em up games, but, you know, where it's you and you're going against a bunch of monsters like that. I thought it was kind of like a battle royale game, but I'm kind of glad it's not because I actually was enjoying it a lot more since it wasn't like, you know, your your ragtag basic ro royale game. Like I said, the game was free, so I thought it was like kind of like that and how the video kind of looked of the actual trailer when you actually see it in the Play Store. To me, it kind of reminded me of like, you know, your basic, you know, battle royale game, you know. Uh, but as I played, I saw that, you know, it actually had um, similar qualities to, like, you know, a, you know, like a normal basic shooter or, like, you know, a royal game. But, you know, it the graphics is what kind of pulled me into making me want to continue and see what actually all the game has in store. At this point in the tutorial, there was a system breach in the program or whatever of the game where Fun Fun Co. had intervened and 
basically came and attacked me during the tutorial level and basically I was supposed to stay in the circle and I ended up kept leaving the circle because I didn't know that I actually had to stay in the circle because I was too busy shooting everything trying to stay alive so I end up getting very low in health because I didn't know I had to stay in the circle to actually finish the tutorial mission or quest or like basically just finish the tutorial in general so I kept leaving out and then at the end I finally noticed that oh I'm supposed to stay in the circle to actually basically kill the rest of the mobs and then it'll just end and I ended up getting very low in health and I thought I was going to be going to be you know done for but then I'm like oh no I actually finished I had to pick up all the coins just to make sure I got anything and I didn't know if it was money ammo or what I just picked it all up and then I left. After reassimilating in the real world, I once again checked to see what was up with those vending machines. And I checked behind them to see, okay, like, when do I get a chance to use them? Because they look like something that you can interact with, but I still wasn't able to interact with. Then I got kind of nosy and wanted to see if there was some interactable under the steps and stuff like that. So I gave up and went to go talk to Gilly again. Welcome back, Plug. Great job in there. You're tough, like your uncle. Now that you've tried it out, recruitment begins. Take a look around the arcade. You'll find several of Super City's elite gaming gangs. Instead of throwing you into the deep end with all of them, go find Label. She leads the 98s and has always been a friend to this arcade. See if you can get her on board with our cause. Remember, the more people we have playing, the more we'll be able to fight back against Fun Fun Co's virus. I appreciate it, kiddo. Be clear about what's on the line, and she'll have to listen to you. Or maybe not. One last thing. I can't believe I forgot. You know, I got a lot going on in that genius brain of mine. But sometimes it's the little things that I lose track of. That's why a system is so important. I can't be expected to keep track of everything, can I? All right, anyway, good luck. Right, I want to introduce you to someone. Tomboy, get your alloy ass over here and meet Plug. Whoops, must have slipped my mind. Well, let me tell you, this tin can is a real lifesaver. He's helped me build some of my finest games, including Arcadegeddon. Not sure I could have done it without him. What am I saying? Of course I could have done it. <laughs> hmm? At this point, this is when we go meet Shorty upstairs. I tried talking to uh, Tombot. You couldn't actually really interact. I came over here to look at this face again, and then I was like, noticed that it actually did move around it. And you couldn't actually interact with it. It just it was scary and just interesting. Uh? Ooh. <laughs> Sup, little sport? You lost? Well, you found her. Not sure how my killer outfit didn't tip you off. What do you want with my gang? Especially considering I've never seen you around Gillies before. You come here much? No doubt. If you're looking for 98, the most styling crew around, this is where you'll find us. That is, if we aren't chilling at Juicy's house. His mom's cookies are always blazing, and I ain't just talking about them coming out of the oven. She sprinkles salt on him. Sea salt. Your mom make cookies? Nice. Moms are the real ones. So, are you sniffing around here for some style tips? Because you're low on steez, kid. Seriously, low. FFC. <laughs> uh, they're the most boring suits around. Same black suit, same black tie. Ugh, they wouldn't know a good look if it kicked them in the butt. Anyway, who are you to tell me how to run my gang? 98's not about to take orders from some new kid who can't even match his weak cheeks to his bleak sneaks. Head to toe. Listen, your credibility is plummeting, kid. See yourself out. Oh, hold up. Gilly's your uncle? Hmm. That's a bit of a game changer. 
98 has nothing but respect for the old man. He makes solid games and looks good doing it. Plus, that little robot buddy of his sneaks me free credit sometimes. We might just be down to help, if... Those in the know claim that Gilly added something hot to RK to get in, but you've got to finish a full level to find it. If you pop in there and snatch us something fly, maybe the flyest gang in Super City uh, can give you what you want. Word. 98 appreciates you scouting ahead. And hey, while you're in there, why don't you grab a couple new threads for yourself? No offense, but it couldn't hurt. Shorty was hitting me hard with them comments about my style, but it's cool. Uh, at this moment, I tried to figure out what some of the other buttons do, because I had a bunch of extra buttons. I'm like, do they do anything? Because while I was doing the tutorial, I was able to do a bunch of other stuff, but I was like, do any of those buttons work outside the game? But then I'm like, okay. I guess they don't because I'm not actually, you know, in the game universe and all those moves that was in the game universe. So I hopped back in for an actual quest that she sent me on. And I was like, okay, we'll see how this goes. So I finally got into the first match, ended up hopping in it because, you know, Shorty wanted me to. You know, test out the first level and show off some of my skills and stuff like that. Also, we got Gilly, of course, at the top. He, you know, giving out information about my first match because it is my first time hopping in an actual match. Or I don't know if this is like, uh, this ain't the survival one. I think this is like the the trial you make. You start at the beginning and try and make it to the end or something like that. But as I go through this, there's a bunch of healing stations that you can. I don't know if you have to pay for it. Now. I never actually used them throughout this match. I actually did decent at dodging and, and and shooting to where I didn't actually have to worry about healing. Um, I did find out there's a melee weapon, of course, which is the bat, which I did enjoy for a minute. But I found this other gun that I don't know if it popped out of one of the crates or it popped out of like one of the characters I had to, you know, shooting. But either way, I saw it and I was enjoying it for a minute. Then I ended up switching over to one of the other guns that I found. And basically, I just end up switching back and forth because the reload speed on some of these weapons are kind of slow. So I would literally shoot one, switch to the other gun, and shoot that one. Then I would kind of like back up, reload all of them, and then, you know, rinse and repeat. Um, I did get good at, you know, aiming and jumping around and then like jumping off a platform, shooting, shooting, and then jumping off the platform so I can dodge and I get hit but still hit my target. Also, I'm finding out one of these uh, purple chests at the bottom. I think it's like like four or five different color chests. There's a purple, blue, a green, and then there's also like a gold one, which I don't think I find in this match. I think I find in the next one that I do. Either way, there was somebody shooting me. I didn't know where they were, so I ended up just jumping around a little bit, trying to figure out a you know double jump, to get on the platform, and couldn't for some reason. So I had to go all the way around. Then I finally move on to the next part of this match and stuff like that. And man, literally bullets were just coming from everyone. I was like, okay, what's going to happen? <laughs> and I thought I was going to lose a bunch of health here, but I did it. I did pretty decent. And to find a shotgun, or I don't know if it's a shotgun or what it is. But either way, it shoot like one, but it has like long range. And that ended up becoming like one of my favorite weapons for next time I move on to the next. Otherwise, enjoy. Um, I get a bunch of other weapons and test them out as I go. Little note, I thought you could drop a weapon and it doesn't be fine, but any weapons that you trade out does have like a small time limit of how long it's on the uh, floor before it despawns. Any gun you get out of the chest, those seem to last like a, a nice little about amount of time, but even then those disappear after a while. Because I went back to get a weapon that I had traded for to test out another weapon and the weapon had despawned and I was like dang but I just got over and kept on moving with the game
I don't know what you call this area right here. If you want to call it like a rest stop or what it is, like a you know a renew station or something like that. But on the counter there was some perks. There was a few weapons on there. I ended up picking up one of the weapons on there and trying out another weapon that came out of the crate. Didn't like it because it replaced my uh, shoddy that I had, the the top gun that I have on the right side. But I did pick up that one gun off the counter that I don't know if it shoots like fire or fire balls. But it's like rapid fire fireballs, and I actually was really enjoying how I shot. Yeah, I did run into that into that uh, blade. <laughs> I don't know how I like spinned, and it still tapped me, even though I wasn't like underneath and stuff like that. Now, one thing I don't understand how it works is the different perks that I've been picking up. I pick up a bunch of perks, but I don't know how they actually work. Now, one thing I wasn't paying attention to was that that had lit up, and that it was possibly going to hurt me. It didn't hurt that much because it seemed like the shield that we have is actually a lot bigger than it was. And here's where I did find the gold chest. It wasn't this match and I'm not in the uh, other match. But either way, yeah, the gold chests are definitely ones that literally pack out a lot of stuff. I ended up picking up this one gun that I didn't know what it was. I thought it was a tank for a minute, but the tank was actually a different perk <laughs> that I had picked up and I picked it up anyway. But the, the middle gun that I have is actually like a flamethrower. And it actually, you know, this may be very, you know, you know, typical of a flamethrower. But guess what? It pack heat. <laughs> so, uh, enjoy this next part of me just literally destroying anything and everything that comes after me. Now one thing, even though I completed the stage, I never found the special thing that, you know, Shorty was looking for that was part of the uh, the NTR group or whatever, that one gang. I don't know what the name of the gang is. But either way, I never did find a special item. And I thought my, my, my skills were deso. It wasn't, you know, super hard the level, especially since it was just the first level. And I'm sure as it goes on and that, you know, that green number goes up higher, it will get harder. But, you know, it is what it is. Hold up, before you say a single word, I must say, you're looking mighty fly. Could just be that sense of accomplishment you've got flashed across your face. Could also be the kicks. Either way, I'm impressed. No, but I do have a stylin' and sweet fresh-baked cookie with your name on it. Straight out of the oven. Listen, kid, true style doesn't come overnight. It's developed. We know this arcade is important to you, 
So take this as a sign of our appreciation. And that's not how it works in Super City. If you rush an alliance, you're bound to get burnt. No time to waste. Head over to the customization machine now and interact with it to equip your new plugin. Now here comes the moment we all been waiting for, or at least the moment I've been waiting for. I was wondering where the customization station was, and guess where it was? It was the mother flopping vending machine. I finally was able to actually open it up, and I found out that literally this game has a lot of customization to your character, your clothing, your hairstyle, your actual how your character looks. And I'm sure there's a bunch of other stuff that, you know, I just haven't unlocked yet. But they have preset outfits. You can buy different shirts and stuff and pants and different gauntlets that go on your arm and stuff like that. And it all comes in with, I think, the in-game currency. Because uh, Gilly was telling me that to buy the different, you know, character customization, you get it just by earning tickets from playing the different levels and stuff like that. Um, also, there's a bunch of different, like, uh, plugins and stuff like that. They kind of, like, give you extra abilities while you're actually playing stuff like that. Uh, that will probably be in the next video because I don't even know how those actually work. I haven't got that far. I end up equipping them and stuff like that, and then I end up joining into, like, a online match later on. You'll see in the video. Also, uh, you can also, like, equip, like, different weapons. As you play the game, you'll unlock them and to equip different weapons to start each round off with as you you know see that you know you just start off with the of course the slugger which is the bat and the light gun which is just like a pistol but as you see as I was playing literally you find other weapons very easily unless I was just you know just the first level because you know you just not starting off the game but um basically the rest of this part is literally just gilly Giving a bunch of information, talks about the different gang members that's standing around in the building. That's a gang member. There's another gang member all the way in the back over there. One right there. And they're just like all around the uh, arcade. And I guess you're supposed to just like earn your respect for the different gang members as you play and stuff like that. And they got different quests stuff like that. And um, I think afterwards I end up going back to customization after I get done talking to them. Oh, also the leaderboard. He tells you about the leaderboard at the beginning of the game. But I kind of skipped that part and took that part out because it wasn't needed. But now, you know, as he's giving us information about the rest of how the game works and stuff like that. And, you know, he also talks about how Tombot gives you daily quests and stuff like that. And they change, of course, periodically. Like any, you know, like daily quests and stuff like that. It happens. I think there's also weekly quests and stuff like that, too. Uh, I haven't really got too much into that either, but otherwise I did go back into looking at the customization of the character and you'll see me actually look at the different guns and actually click on the different guns in the dang menu. Of course I can't use any of them yet or I can start off with them, I can use them in a magic if I find one, but actually equipping it to start off with and actually get to use immediately that, you know, of course I gotta unlock it as I go. Otherwise, I end up going through and scrolling through most of the different clothing options. I don't think I buy nothing but like some headphones, just because I, you know, I don't know. I can I'm kind of wise with you know in-game currency because if a lot of times it's hard to, you know, get the in-game currency. But at the same time, I don't know. I don't know if it's just like we got a lot because we finished that quest, which she did give us like five thousand something like that. And I don't know if it's easy just by finishing quest or what. So I just bought some headphones, I think, and that was about it. Oh no, and I think I also upgraded my arm uh, gauntlet or whatever, and that was about it. Uh, otherwise, enjoy the the rest of me, you know, going through and showing off the different, you know, customization options.
After looking through all the customization options, I go talk to Royal, which is another gang leader in that's hanging out in the uh, arcade. And when you first walk up to her, she's not even listening to you. She's watching like a video on her like special like glasses that are from her company or something like that, or they're part of her team or something like that. And she talks about how yeah, you gotta prove your skills to her and her team. So they'll actually like allow you to like purchase their merch and stuff like that and allow their merch to be sold like at uh the arcade and stuff like that. So she wants you to do just like, you know, a lot of the other game members will want you to do it. They want you to, you know, play, prove your skills and show what you can do. Once you show your skills, I guess they'll like slowly but surely come around and turn around and actually, you know, be part of the actual team. After talking to her, I go over to this machine that's next to her and basically start one of the online matches. I end up walking upstairs and seeing these two guys. I'm like, no, no, I'm not talking to them. I'm walking away. And the match eventually starts. Now, this match ended up going pretty well, in my opinion, until it seemed like I lost connection at one point, which, you know, ain't bad. But at the same time, it was like, it seemed like the match was going pretty well for me to end up losing you know connection I don't know if I lost connection or you know basically the whole thing crashed basically the whole point of the game was basically it's basically uh what's it called there's that one game where you're shooting or you're de destroying the platforms under people spleef basically that's what it is spleef now the thing about it is this isn't the only like game mode in multiplayer there's a bunch of other ones but like I said during this round the game actually not the game but this this round I don't know if it crashes or loses connection to where it actually you know I end up getting sent back to basically the lobby which is like the game arcade basically that's like the lobby of the uh, of this game and you can invite your friends to come and chill with you in the arcade and everything like that to start other matches to like that so it's actually a pretty cool game though after losing connection I went over back to the machine start to get put in a new queue for another match uh, but I made the mistake of actually not recording the gameplay of that match so the vi this video is just going to end off with you know while me you know trying to start up to get into the match just me going around and walking around and seeing the other gang leaders that are just like kind of positioned around the building I don't know if all of my game leaders or just some of them are just random NPCs you can just talk to but I saw a lot of interesting faces and stuff like that so I hope you enjoyed. Uh, there will be more. Uh, I will be back to streaming soon. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed. This is Steve the King. I am over and out of here.
Bye.